It's not the black and gray monocoque or monocoque. It's the Big Game BG MQ Mono. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You've been a wonderful audience. Ow. This might be the first in, in spinning reel history where the rash guard wasn't just some flimsy afterthought metalized plastic. Like this is dropped on the floor. Very sturdy. And I don't know if this is a prototype thing or if this is going to find its way into production, but look at the the gasket is the best way to describe it. It doesn't complete its journey. <laughs> and when you install the hatch in the boot, I get that it's going to kind of compress and you kind of got to force it the rest of the way, but there's no way, there's not even enough travel for it to grab it stretch it and put it in place and even if so i don't ever want to have to rely on elasticity to blindly seat it to the rest of the way if i want to depend on the reel to be 100 percent water waterproof so they're not the ultra corrosion resistant variety they're just a very good quality high precision stainless so they're spectacular bearings they're just not the ultra corrosion resistant variant which are a little bit more expensive the biggest, baddest cast zinc main gear ever put in a reel this size. It's going to get picked on in during gym class. It's going to get its french fries stolen at lunch because it's not machine aluminum or brass. But he'll still stuff a volleyball down your face in, in, in gym class. <laughs> that just made it really easy. I don't have to like figure out the sealing method of the line roller bearing uh, and how it relates to how they did it in the Stratic FL or the Saragossa or the Spheros because they didn't put any in it at all whatsoever. So the first early generation of the Pen Slammer had exactly that, the, the bushing supported line roller. We have the line rollers. You have ball bearing line rollers in the Saragossa. The old slammers used bushings. They did release a new bail uh, armature. They did away with it. So it's interesting to see Daiwa uh, starting off on that, on that same foot. I would have loved to have seen that rubber seal in there. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the oil that I put in there is gonna stay there longer because it has that seal, because seals work both ways. They keep stuff out and they'll keep stuff in. Gentlemen, ladies and anyone in between, I welcome you all. And today we'll be getting up close and personal with the brand spanking new, yet to even debut, Daiwa BGMQ. Now, before we go ahead and get started, I wanna give you guys a quick rundown as to how we got to this point, because these reels aren't even on store shelves yet. And here I am about to do what I do best, which is tear stuff apart and compare it to the competition and pick a winner for the most part. And uh, apparently Dai was okay with it. So <laughs> the only thing I was told was be fair, which is, that's a guarantee with me. So what I did prior to filming of this video was put out a, a, a precursor to this asking you guys what you wanted me to focus on. So going by your hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of replies and comments from Instagram and YouTube and my YouTube community page and Stripers Online, emails and DMs and PMs, what you guys wanted to see most overwhelmingly was to see how this compares to the Spin Fisher. So what I'll be bringing in today is kind of tying into what Penn did last year before the Spin Fisher debuted, where they sent me all three of them to fish and beat on and tear down prior to the release as well. Unfortunately, with these, I just didn't have enough time because what I did with the Spin Fisher was I sneakily sent one down to my friend Elias V to North Carolina for him to just smoke and trash on kingfish and barracuda, shark and reds. And then the week before the reel released, I did the tear down review and analysis on that reel based on how it was just destroyed and tortured. Can't, you, I can't really do that with these, I just don't have enough time, but I'll be comparing them to a 
look at this bouquet of mag sealed high end Iowa reels. We have a Fuego, Ballistic, another Ballistic, and Emeraldis from one of my subscribers and friends, Scott Haberg. I have a Chaldea and Exist from another friend and subscriber all the way on the other side of the world from Australia, Oscar B. Follow him down below. We'll leave links to his Instagram. He's an awesome dude and an awesome fisherman. And I have a Certate. I've had Saltists. I've had every single mag seal Daiwa reel pretty much that's current. And my hand was cramping from doing so many intros and holding that bouquet of <laughs> spinning reels for so long. And uh, so, yeah, I'll be bringing in my long term personal experiences from those reels, applying them to this new design. And we'll also have one of them on the table torn down as a comparison as well. We'll also be bringing in the black and gold BG because there's been a bit of confusion. Simply put, half of the people that left comments or one of the most common things that I've seen was how does it compare to the replacement or the reel that it's replacing, sorry. This is not a replacement to the black and gold BG. What they're doing with this here is trying to capitalize on the popularity of the BG name. And yeah, this is a 200 to $280 reel. It's not a 100 to $130 reel like the black and gold BG. Uh, it's a completely different price point. So what they're calling this reel, it's not the black and gray monocoque or monocoque. It's the big game BG MQ mono. So, B, big, G, game, mono, one, <laughs> I don't even know. And so, so, with all that being said, guys, let's go ahead. I'm going to clear this off the table for now. I'm going to clear this off the table for now. And we're going to start cracking this puppy. I have yet to be in this reel. The only thing I did was take the handle off, look at the side plate seal here, and just unscrew it with the tool that was supplied to me from Daiwa. So first things first, this is a side plate removal tool. The only way to get in this reel is to use this specific tool. This is the one they supplied me, which is a little bit different than the aftermarket one I had for the smaller Certate and Exist. And we're gonna go ahead and loosen that puppy up. There should be, there should be an O-ring right against here. Unfortunately, when I opened it up for the first time, the O-ring split. I forward that information along to Daiwa. At the same time, anytime you take apart a van stall or any type of reel that has kind of the threaded inside plate, uh, you want to replace that O-ring because it's a, a type of O-ring that sees a lot of rub against that top thread before it kind of releases. So I wanted to get that out of the way first, offer that explanation. No harm, no foul, but just know two things. If you ever want to open up this reel and get inside and access the main gear, you want to have a couple of those O-ring seals and there's no way to get into it without this tool. And as far as I can tell, uh, that tool doesn't exist for sale at the moment. I could be wrong. There may be a few on eBay and uh, yeah. <laughs> With that out of the way, uh, one of the most commonly asked question was how did they go about the drag stack and how did they seal the drag stack against the elements? Now we're going to later on bring in the spin fisher and make all sorts of comparisons, how they did things that with that. We're going to bring in the Saragossa, the one that's already been discontinued with the new one on the way and some things I've seen on the new Saragossa that we'll bring up as well. And the Saltus, the black and blue Saltus, which I compared directly to the Slammer. All these reels mentioned are all in this reel's price point. So this reel has to be carrying some big guns. And the first thing you'll notice with move, removing that side plate was you don't need special tools to get in the Slammer. You don't need special tools to get in the Spinfish. Or you don't need special tools to get into the Saragossa or Spheros. You don't need special tools to get in the black and blue saltist. You do with the BGMQ. And once you do, the only two reels in this price point that do not offer either a machined brass 
or a forged and machined aluminum main gear is this and the black and blue saltist. Now, the Daiwa BG is one of the most proven reels to hit the market. It doesn't have much in terms of elemental resistance, but in terms of cranking power and power transmission from when you're winching on the handle and you're trying to get that line to come and wrap on the spool and get that fish in, that platform is proven. That gearing is proven. It just doesn't have that premium material, which when you read about the specs of a reel shows up and gives you the warm and fuzzy. It's like, ooh, I'm getting a machine forged aluminum, da 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 da. It's brass, yes. Now, in the spin fisher, when you get up to the bigger sizes, 6,500 on up, you get this. This is a machined brass gear out of a 6,500. But if you look here, it's physically smaller. That's the same, the, the one saving grace between the cast zinc gear that Daiwa has been putting in their reels. It's massive. It's absolutely massive. This is from a reel that weighs 24 ounces. This is much bigger. Just throwing that out there. The gearing, the size of the teeth, the way the gears are supported, regardless of the, of the fact it's a monocoque, monocoque body design, Daiwa's gearing is some of the best out there, even if it's cast and zinc. So I wanted to address that early on before we went to the other stuff, because a few things that I noticed through going through this reel, the seal here on the side plate, all right, which is another thing you guys really wanted me to focus on like a laser beam was this overall sealing of the reel. I find it lacking already. I'm only at the handle side plate and I, I got to tell you, if, if I'm recommending a reel for somebody to go hit the jetties and the beaches of the Northeast, I'm recommending the Slammer 3, the Spin Fisher, Saragossa, and Spheros. And I'm telling, you, telling them right off the bat, these aren't Van Stalls. They could take a beating. They're not going to enjoy the sand or they're not going to be enjoying time spent underwater in a sandy wash. Occasionally, you might be able to get away with the dunk, but with super hot scorching temperatures, and then when things cool down and the difference in temperatures can pull moisture through the seals as the pressure, you know, equalizes. The seals on the four reels I mentioned previously aren't the equal to that of a Van Stoll and a Z-Bass. With this seal here being... It's, it's, it's not great. I'll show you a close-up with how it mates to the handle. And it, it would be nice to see the identical method of sealing that the Saragossa that's going away, the Spheros that's, I guess, still current, that the Spin Fisher and Slammer employed where they used a rubber O-ring on the outward side of the side plate bearing. And then sandwiched that bearing against the seal and that seal would run on the axle of the main gear not just on the axle of the handle it's in my personal first hand experience a seal that has let water by on two separate occasions on three reels that i would use for the salt so it was this the ballistic 6000 and a daiwa theory 3500 pe H. Had to replace that side plate bearing right out of the gate. And these reels were taken care of. They never were dunked. I maintain my gear. I use oil to keep to make sure that the seals are dry. So when I first got this reel in my hand and took that handle off, I was like, oh crap. <laughs> it's the same thing that I've seen on that handful of reels, that fistful, that bouquet of Daiwa reels. Every single one of them had that same seal. And so I, except for the exist, the exist is a mag seal ball bearing and it uses o-ring on the on the handle shaft so there would be a ball bearing and you can see the groove here on this main gear imagine if there was an o-ring that went on the inner race of the ball bearing to keep water out and relied on the mag seal ball bearing in the perimeter and guess what when i took that exist apart there was corrosion in the main gear so the way the spin fisher the way the pen slammer three the way the Saragossa SW that's going away and the way the Spheros seal off the handle entry point, I find to be a uh, 
a superior design to this. Plain and simple. With that being said, let's go ahead and move along to the drag. Our goal here being not to uh, bury this reel before it's born. So when we compared the Slammer to the black and blue Spinfisher, we made reference to how the gasket sealed off the top of the drag and how it was important to make sure that debris that would accumulate, meaning sand on the beach, wouldn't bind to the drag knob and when line would be paid out, it gr the, the bulk of sand grip the, the, the drag knob and tighten the drag as line's been paid out. I had issues with that uh, with the Z-Bass reel, the Gen 2, first generation of the Gen 2 Z-Bass. I had an issue with sand jamming on the spool. Uh, I had issues. I, I wouldn't say issues. I was able to duplicate uh, my concern with the Spinfisher. And uh, I think, looking at how they did it here, you'll have a gap here that will filter out some of the big debris. So you say you get hit, hit over the head with a wave and it's bringing sand and debris with you. You're going to have a little bit of shielding. It's going to run off and deflect. What gets in here to to contaminate the drag and the drag grease, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look a up close look at the drag in a second. It has to get by this lip seal here. It's not, chances are it's not going to get past it. You know, a simple wave over the head is not going to do that. But what I like here is the ridging here. So there's no fl r true flat spot for debris to purchase and grip that drag knob. So I, I think they did a pretty good job. I think they're safe there. I don't think you're going to have an issue with that at all. Now, the other thing I want to point out with the drag knob, and I've never seen anybody else on the interwebs other than me mention this, and it sort of has to do with line management, something that Daiwa and Shimano have done better than anybody else in the saltwater game for decades. One of my biggest pet peeves against some of the pen reels that have come, come out in the recent years. And it's my only knock. See that little ridge, dead smack in the middle there. When you, let me put this back on the reel. Oh, we got a drag stab. Ooh, that's it. When you open up the bale, make your cast. When you don't want your cast, you want to manually close the bale. Now, if you look here, there's a rotor brake, real stiff. So when this is open, that rotor brake is tight. It's one of the tightest I've ever felt. It feels really good. It has a really good lockup, almost like my Saltiga. When you go to close the line, it's going to snap shut pretty hard, and it's going to take that line that you had out or you're feathering tension on as you're about to pull it tight because you want to pre-tension the line before you start your retrieve to avoid any wind knots. I've had issues where when it snaps shut, it catches on that notch. This was on a Saltiga, this is on a Ballistic, this is on the Certate, the Exist, the smaller Ballistic 2500s, the Tatula, the list goes on and on. My only knock against the Daiwa spinning reels is this notch in terms of their line management. They do everything else equal to that of Shimano's worm-driven oscillation system and superior to that of their their the locomotion level line systems which are found in this and they they, they generally end in the shimano uh nasky and what's that other one ah, i forgot the name of it it got the golden poop award in the 99 dollar teardown <laughs> video so before we continue on let's go ahead and take a look at the drag step so we went over the drag knob i'm throwing parts everywhere let's take a look at the drag stack now Carbon fiber, heavily greased, thick. What is this? <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna get back to. I don't know what this is. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that in a second. I don't know what I can offer on it. Very thick washers to radiate heat, which is good. You have the eared washer, which basically uh, enables the drag stack and the friction to be applied on multiple surfaces, other than just rotating on the, the weakest link. It's uh, it's fairly straightforward. It's uh, not very different than the uh, the black and gold BG, to be honest. And I don't know what this is. It, I I don't know what, what the purpose of that plastic washer is. I don't want to call it a shim because it doesn't appear to be. Um, it's just a clear plastic 
washer, which is almost like what you would see here where the spool would run on. Um, I don't understand it because the drag knob surface with those three little dots here, that doesn't turn. That's keyed to the main shaft of the reel. This top washer is keyed to the main shaft of the reel. Um, dissimilar metals from the retaining clip, maybe, to isolate it? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, that's the only thing I can think of. Beyond that, I, I, I don't know. because it's not, it's not a seal because you have a seal up here. This seal is not going to touch that at all because it's you know, opposite. So, okay, that's a question mark. Uh, now, we're not done yet with the drag. This is going to bring up the fact that the Saragossa and the Slammer have uh, way more impressive drag stacks than what's found in the BGMQ. Right out of the gate. I mean, you have drag stacks separated by the arbor of the spool. You have drag surface areas underneath the spool and on top of the spool on the Saragossa. That's going away. So it's been there for six years and on the Slammer. So is that a problem? I, how many of you guys are fishing 30 pounds of drag and, and fishing that drag setting against fish that are capable of pulling it? Are you, are you, are you using the 30 pounds of drag on a spinner for, for bluefin tuna? Are you using 30 pounds of drag for, you know, reef donkeys? Are you messing around with Goliath group? Are, how many fish out there are you fishing 30 pounds of drag for? Uh, that's on you guys. That's on you. So I don't see that as an issue. On the Penn Slammer, the lowest, lightest drag sitting was about a 1.6, 1.7 pounds, which if you wanted to use a reel as a, a bait reel, was a little restrictive because it was a little bit too tight at the lowest setting, if that makes sense. Same thing with the Saragossa. If you wanted to use it as a live lining bait reel, the minimum drag setting was a little high. Uh, other than that, they were superb. So when you compare this in terms of the, the spool and the drag, you're comparing it to the Spheros, and you're comparing it to the Spinfish, or you're not comparing it to the Slammer. You're not comparing it to the Saragossa. Who knows what's coming out on the new Saragossa? I'm willing to bet they're going to keep the same design, but it has to be mentioned. And comparing it to the black and blue Saltist, it also appears that the spool support on the black and blue Saltist is a little bit better. This is... A little more simple. On the 6,000 size, they have a ball bearing here with the, the click plate and the spool shims, which anyway you slice it, when you have a top drag stack only design, the spool is being compressed against these shims. So you have your drag washers, which are carbon fiber and aluminum up top, and then the bottom is a piece of plastic. And that's the only sealing you're getting as well, where the only thing that's keeping water out of this reel or out of the spool, is this little donut here, this little piece of aluminum here that shrouds the bearing when it's compressed against those shimming washers which lift and lower the spool to create an even or a desired line level shape. There. So, man, very basic here. Very, very basic. And they also employed a little washer which keeps everything put. So you can't remove this unless you clear this all the way. On the Daiwa Fuego 2500, it's almost invisible. <laughs> Just putting that out there. All right. Next up. Let's take a look at the line roller. Very curious to see how this is made up. You guys are seeing this for the first time along with me. I see what it looks like. Nope, I thought it was an O-ring. Bushings. So they're not even trying to seal any of this off at all whatsoever. Honestly, <laughs> in terms of me doing this on the fly, <laughs> that just made it really easy. I don't have to like 
figure out the ceiling method of the line roller bearing uh, and how it relates to how they did it in the Stratic FL or the Saragossa or the Spheros because they didn't put any in it at all whatsoever. So if you look at the ballistic, at least the ballistic LT had some form of keeping water out. Um, the first early generation of the pen slammer had exactly that, the, the bushing supported line roller. They did away with it. So it's interesting to see Daiwa uh, starting off on that, on that same foot. So an advantage of this over the Stratic FK and the existing Saragossa and Stella, at, or pre the, the this SWB, the Stella FI, you can service this. This is modular. This is easy to access. You just loosen up the screw, put a drop of TSI-321 oil there or a drop of Corrosion X oil, and uh, it'll keep it spinning free, and it'll, it'll keep anything pertaining to solder deposits from binding up. And you can easily just strip it down and clean it out. I will take that over a crunchy ball bearing after every sixth outing for people that just fish their stuff and don't ever maintain anything. I'll take this over that any day of the week because you don't have to constantly be bothered with replacing parts. It's a, a tool to be used as long as possible between maintenance intervals. This being almost a requirement. Maintaining your line roller is a requirement in saltwater. Anyway you slice it, you guys can't ignore that aspect of the reel, which everybody always does, and they always complain about it because they turn the handle when they have a lure at the end of the line and you hear that That could have been prevented. That could have been prevented. Just a drop of oil. All you have to do is back that screw out and you're done. So. No harm, no foul there. It's, it's one of those things that, yeah, if they sealed it, I would have liked to have seen the seals that the ballistic had. I really would. And then kept the bushings there. So that way, when I put oil on it, the seal helps keep the oil in place and keeps debris and contaminants away from the oil that I put there. But they're, I'm just dropping stuff all over the place. I guess that's what happens when I rant a little bit. You know what? Hang, hang. You know what? We're going to compare that down the road. We, can, we can't stop. We can't stop believing that Dial was going to want to shoot me after they see this video. <laughs> and speaking of. I don't know what we were speaking of, to be honest. We are at the. And by the way, this is a plier's wrench. It's a plier's wrench. It's a parallel jaw plier. You guys have been like, well, why are you using a pair of pliers on your rope? It's a plier wrench. It's a parallel jaw wrench. It works better than your individual wrenches. So don't judge me. Anyway, that rotor nut, same as the ballistic. On the 8,000 size, which we'll crack in a little while, we'll save, we'll save the 8,000 for another video just to keep it separate. It doesn't employ this rotor retaining nut with the shaft's seal, which comes off just like that. And it has a rubber O-ring underneath it. It goes about it from what I can see just by pulling the spool off, similar to that of the Saragossa and the Slammer and the Saltist. Now, the rotor. The rotor material is incorrectly listed on Daiwa's page as Zion. It's not. It's standard graphite. I do not believe it's anything different than what you'll find on the Daiwa BG Black and Gold or the Saltist Black and Blue. The other thing worth mentioning that we completely glossed over is the bail arm. It does not have the Daiwa air bail, and I believe that's done intentionally. Well, of course it's done intentionally, but this design is, a, it may or may not be a little more weighty. That doesn't bother me in the least. Who cares? It's a difference of a couple grams at most, two, three grams at most. But it's stainless steel, one piece, which is going to be stronger than a tubular Aluminum that has to be kind of sleeved or crimped over a point before it goes into this. Um, yeah, so 
It's got the more basic non-frilly bail wire, but for this reel's intended purpose, I think it's a better solution. And I have no idea what is going on here. Is this just a compression compression? Fin? Oh, it's a screw cap. Ooh, it screws down. Oh, uh oh. Here we go. We're getting happy, guys. We haven't been happy about this reel yet, and I'm I'm happy now. Because this is what I had hoped every single mag sealed reel was in the past, but it just never was. So far, we're liking this. Now, let's take let's talk about the brand spanking new Stella. And if you follow me on, on Stripers Online or anybody else who reads the comments when people ask me about the Stella, you're not going to see that, all the stuff. But they took the brand new Stella and cheapened the crap out of it because housing the anti-reverse clutch in the actual body and doing a screw down cap, which they've done since the 08 Stella, was apparently too expensive. So they just took the Saragossa SW and Spheros SW anti-reverse clutch, which is just three screws mounted on top, and bleh. That's what they did with that. Yet, from what I can tell, this housing, not saying the clutch is equal to the Stella, but the way they house it uh, is, is spectacular. Now... I don't know what's going on here. We have a seal at the base of the rotor and lots of what appears to be grease. So we're going to have to take our O-ring manipulation tool. Gently. Ah, beautifully done here. Okay. Okay. So they have... We're going to leave that there because we're, to, to get this off, it's probably pretty pretty close in tolerance to that little plunger on the base of the rotor. You see that where my finger is? How that little pull piece, that yoke comes down? They sleeved it with a what appears to be a brass, almost hourglass-shaped pull piece, which... This O-ring slipped over, which then goes down into here. And the way that this is going to function, I'll give this better marks. I can't give it better marks yet. It's not proven. Um, I like this method of sealing using a physical barrier. Better than I like the sealing of the Spin Fisher and Slammer. I had failures at the anti reverse clutch bearing, and I know friends and people that I fished with um, have had failures at that top pinion bearing as a result of the design. That was easy. So I like seeing a physical contact seal better than fancy paint that repels and repels water. Plain and simple. So, it looks like there's an O-ring. Beautiful. Okay. So, there's another O-ring here. Let's see if we can crack these and back out. No. There we go. That was easy. One thing nice about the seal at this location is it it's seemingly easily serviceable. A dry seal is a failed seal. If seal gets dry, it will fail. It will fail prematurely. I'm going to do this off camera. They have the same retaining clip 
found on many of the other Daiwa reels to get the main gear out. Easy peasy. Now, let's go ahead and remove the boot. The boot is where we stopped at the end of the last video. We didn't want to do any tearing down of the reel. We haven't been behind it yet, but we did size up the, pre the correct hex key. My biggest concern with the, the, this was going to be a flimsy piece of plastic, which on 90% of the reels out there it is. Uh, Daiwa, when they had the Saltiga Surf 10 years ago or so, maybe more, uh, this boot, the O-ring behind it, or the gasket behind it to protect the entire internal workings of the reel was right up against the edge it was super flimsy and $500 reel failed so prematurely as a result of that we're really hoping that we don't see it I haven't seen it yet I'm keeping my eyes closed I'm staring up at the ceiling right now fingers my toes are crossed okay and okay okay this might this might be the first in in spinning reel history where the rash guard wasn't just some flimsy afterthought metalized plastic. Like this is dropped on the floor. Very sturdy. Now I, I get how having a monocoque designed body with a threaded side plate has some advantages, but you gotta finish the job. Now the 6,000 boot that we remove, the rash guard, the rear cap, the rear housing, whatever you wanna call it, was sealed a little bit differently, and I don't know if this is a prototype thing or if this is going to find its way into production, but look at the, the gasket is the best way to describe it. It doesn't complete its journey. <laughs> and when you install the hatch in the boot, I get that it's going to kind of compress and you kind of got to force it the rest of the way but there's no way there's not even enough travel for it to grab it stretch it and put it in place and even if so i don't ever want to have to rely on elasticity to blindly seat it to the rest of the way if i want to depend on the reel to be 100 percent water waterproof so you have the 360 degrees of equal pressure and support and compression but you have to rely blindly on a plastic boot that kind of lazily and you know what i mean you know what i'm saying guys if i have a a saragossa i know that i can physically see that rubber gasket that is channeled around the two side plates and I know that when I secure those four screws that sandwich that gasket in between the frame and the side plate, I know it's being compressed. I know it's in its track. I know this. I know where the ceiling is occurring. With this, you have multiple screws. You have tight areas. You have loose areas. And if you look here, there is the compressible custom fit gasket it's not just an o-ring it's actually a molded piece of I guess rubber it's awesome okay so we're staring at the oscillation slider I assume that that screw there is what will release the main shaft we want we don't want to mess with that just yet We're also very wary that if that shaft support comes out before we want it to, it may be cause something to bind and we don't want to do any damage. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a shot backing this out. Plan B has that Chamfered edge going oriented north, south. 
go ahead and remove this side bearing. Maybe that'll give us a little bit more angle. Ah, okay. Looks good to me. And this, my friends, the biggest, baddest cast zinc main gear ever put in a reel this size. It's going to get picked on in darn gym class. It's going to get its french fries stolen at lunch because it's not machine aluminum or brass. But it'll still stuff a volleyball down your face in, in, in gym class. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it, I think. It's cast zinc. It's not one of the premium machined CNC and forged and yada, yada, yada. It's for all I can tell. You can see the... Inscription there, it's a cast zinc, but it's beefy, it's strong, and it's got big ass teeth. And it's that contact patch as it interfaces with the pinion, it distributes that force along the entire face of the, the massive gear tooth, and that's what gives you strength. And guys, how many of you have been in the game for 30 years? How many 2002, 2003 spinning reels did you own from Daiwa or Shimano that for a decade plus performed beautifully and it wasn't the gears that ran out, it was the bearings that went bad. When you look at the Daiwa BG, look at the, the Quantum Cabo, the original Quantum, Quantum Cabo. It wasn't the gears that went. People were, oh, you can't get the Boca because of the white metal gears, but you can get the Cabo, the Cabo was better. Cast zinc holds up. It does wear well if it's a good gear design. It's the bearings. Like the, the biggest problem I've ever found with the black and gold BG was the bending of the main shaft and the, the, the bearing here at the, the top of the pinion gear and at the side plate. The gearing was always fine. I'll show you a... Uh... <laughs> this is the 3500, right? This is the 3500 BG, significantly smaller than this one. This main gear is, this is a parts reel. This reel has been beyond beaten. This reel has seen over 100 striped bass, over 30 pounds, pulled out of a four, three and a half to four knot current. You got to winch some fish away from some structure before you drop the gear on the table and play it off like it didn't happen. But it's one of those things that this thing stood up. This was a day one BG. He bought this the day it came out. And it, it, I finally put it to bed last year. And I only worked on it two and a half years ago. So it's only been serviced once in that entire uh, torturous period. And it, it, I couldn't believe the fish he was pulling up. So 100 fish over 30 pounds. Those fish were in the 40s, mid 40s. And the, the dude's out there every day. And he was pulling 20 pound fish, 15 pound fish out of the same current. I don't even know how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fish. And the thing lived. The gears didn't go. It was the bearings and the clutch that just seized up and corroded. I mean, you can see how much use this thing saw. Look at the coloration from the, the UV sun fading of the line roller arm. It's like bronze. It's not the right color anymore. <laughs> But yeah, I keep that just as a, as a reminder to never pick on cast zinc gears because they have the potential to, to win out over time. Next up, it looks to me like they really went ahead and beefed up the main shaft. The main shaft of the 6,000 is the equivalent to the 4,000, which is a little bit bigger than that reel I just brought in with the 3,500 uh, BG. I don't think we're going to be see, seeing too many bent shafts on this reel. A lot of guys are going to be swinging bucktails in current with this reel. A lot of guys are going to be fishing Montauk beaches. A lot of guys are going to be fishing just the canals and rivers, throwing bucktails. And you're going to be palming the spool to get out your snag, which we all do. And you're going to be using 40 pound braid and 30 pound braid and a 40 to 80 pound leader. And you're going to just yank until that bucktail pops, which with the black and gold BG, spelled doom for the shaft on, on many reels. Uh, this one, I'm not seeing that. 
It's just this heavier, heavier gauge. Uh, supported in the same way with the, the single rod. And the twisting force is taken up by that of the face of the oscillation gear here. Which I'm assuming is supported by a bearing. There, there may be a seal on this side here. I don't know. There may or may not be. It's not the end of the world if it's not because that's going to be um, press fit into the frame. So no water is going to get past that. And uh, a bearing at the base of the pinion. That about covers it. So, it's with all that being said, it's time. It's time to bring up the closest reel to its competition in the size in the market, the Spinfisher. So, am I, am I really trying to do that from literally across the room? <laughs> like, why would I do that? Because I'm awesome, that's why. Alright. Drag stack versus drag stack. Eared carbon fiber washers. Versus a single eared metal washer. How do you score that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> They're both good drags. That's, that's the easiest way to put it. The spool click. I'll go with the pen all day, every day. I've had these little, um, where the heck is it? Here. This design here, I've had these fail. I've had that split, right? I've had a break on bait casting reels. I've had a break on their spinners. This, doesn't matter how crusty with salt and schmoo it'll 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 function all and if it doesn't you just loosen up that screw hit it with some you know corrosion x oil and you're you're good to go another another thousand uh thousand fish the spool support comparing the two fairly similar in nature however there is an o-ring instead of a ball bearing there's a uh, brass or a bronze bushing I don't care about a ball bearing at that location. I do like there's some like there's something keyed with a very tight tolerance to the shaft, so that way it'll kind of alleviate some of that spool flex and 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 uh, distortion as the line is being pulled off of it at a different area of the the spool. So the line's not always coming off the spool in the center. It's coming off at the top at the bottom, and the line roller arms always staying in the same spot. So if you have any weeble wobble and we're a poor clearance, you're going to get distortion in the spool, which is not going to pay out line smoothly. And both of them are going to do that very well. I do like the O-ring at the base here as well. In addition to the O-ring at the base, there's an O-ring underneath it, which will prevent water from coming on, up underneath, depending on how tight your drag is set. If there was debris that you had underneath the spool and you tighten down the drag it may not have sealed completely that aspect is a little bit better than the bg now how did they seal the main shaft where it tra traverses the pinion gear similar here okay so there's a three screw cap that he co that holds this down all right whereas with this they had that little rubber o-ring Hold on, I'll show you. Right on right on the reel itself. So you see this? Comparatively, they're very similar. Functionally, they're very similar. Long-term wear, I haven't seen an issue with this design. I haven't seen an issue with this design. And they even went the, 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 the additional step of adding an O-ring underneath, which I don't think is even needed. And both reels, where the main shaft traverses the pinion, incorporate a urethane delrin bushing. So when you're winching against a heavy load, or any load for that matter, the spool's always going to be, or the spool shaft is always going to be being pulled and pinched against the line roller. So if the line roller is here or here, it's always being pulled. Anytime that there's a load on the line that you're retrieving, it's pulling. If you don't have a friction mitigating part to keep the main shaft from rubbing up against metal, 
you're going to lose your transfer of power. It's almost like a parasitic loss. Having a friction mitigating uh, material at that location goes a long way to uh, making sure that you have and maintain your winching power and every ounce of effort you put in makes it to your lure. This is where I, I, I liked what Daiwa did at the anti-reverse clutch a little bit better because as you see here, you have this, this channeled ring at the top here. And then you have those channeled rings underneath the rotor. They nest into one another and they're coated with a, a coating that repels water. So the water is going to beat up and roll off when the rotor turns it's going to make it, since it's going to not ever stick to the surface coating, it's going to allow it to throw it out of that gap, hopefully preventing it from ever making it past that inner ring to here. Now, if you look at the bottom of the rotor, the bottom of the rotor is going to sit on that bushing, and it's going to compress against the inner race of that bearing. So you got that, that let me pull this up a little bit. So you have this brass washer here that goes up against that inner race of the ball bearing that sandwiches the base of the rotor against that, that inner race of the bearing. That's going to take up a lot of that ability for water to get around it. So you don't have to worry about the clearance down in the middle, yada, yada. But you still have to worry about the outer race of the sealed ball bearing. Seal ball bearings fail over time. They're not 100%. I've had issues with this ball bearing failing. I've replaced three or four of these so far. So, verdict's still out on the Daiwa, but I kind of like how they, they did it better. They went the extra mile. They have a physical contact seal versus just a seal ball bearing and a fancy paint coating. Now, I'm kind of regretting what I did there, but it is what it is. Pull the main shaft real quick, trying to get to this main gear as quickly as humanly possible. All right, forged aluminum that's been machined, cast zinc. Now, I get it, this reel is physically smaller, so if more often than not, gear size is somewhat really in relation to the size of the overall reel. But this 4,500 size spin fisher is taking a beating. It's a gear that, I, I don't want to say it's half the size, but man, I mean, look at that. It's, it's almost half the size. So do you want forged machined aluminum or, you know, with little itty bitty tiny teeth? Or do you want teeth that are twice the size and a gear that is twice the size. There have been wars fought over less. That's all I'm saying. And then you have where they seal off the handle entry point, which I made the comment that it's better. <laughs> and it is. It really is. So you have the axle that runs full time on that rubber seal. And then you have this here, which runs on the handle. So every time you pull the handle out, you're distorting this, uh, you're braiding it. So you have inward outward friction every time you take the handle off. And then you have the rotational friction. Um, is there something to be said about, yeah, debris and water can get past the handle where it goes in here and sit on top of that seal? Yeah, of course. Does this do a better job of preventing anything from ever getting up against that? It could. I've had failures. I can only report on my personal experiences. I wish they did something more than what they've had out for the last five years or whenever that came to be in the, the Daiwa lineup, that design. I wish they came out with something new.
and better, frankly, because these reels have been around for a little while now. The Saragossa does it the exact same way, and it's been out for six years. Instead, they came to the table with the exact same part as what can be found in the 6000 Ballistic, which is a wonderful reel. It's a game-changing reel. It only weighs 11 and change in terms of ounces. It's feather light, holds 300 yards of 30-pound braid, and I've caught a 1,000 fish on this. has the same seal. That's the, This is like actually the seal off the 6000. As I mentioned, there was one left in the back of the car when I got that reel. Same exact part number. So I know how that lasts over time. So, <laughs> where do we stand now? How does this compare to the BG in general? Spool support, identical. Rotor, nearly identical. Line roller. Maybe because it's a larger physical size, it's got the, the dual bushing setup versus the single. And comparing it to the $250 ballistic, which employs rubber seal, ball bearing. And then an O-ring, I believe, on the inside, or that bushing to keep debris out. But it has a, that fairly large... Come on. Rubber bushing on the bearing side of the line roller. I would have loved to have seen that rubber seal in there. Again, as I mentioned earlier. It's not going to function 100%. It's going to, salt water is going to get past it. Salt water is going to get past it and dry. Salt water is going to get past it and dry and leave salt water deposits, mineral deposits. But I'm going to open it every two or three weeks, every three to four outings. And I'm going to squirt some TSI 321 in there. I'm not even going to clean a bitch out. I'm just going to squirt some lube in there. And I'm not going to have any problems with it for years. You understand what I'm saying? And the oil that I put in there is going to stay there longer because it has that seal. Because seals work both ways. They keep stuff out and they'll keep stuff in. That's the whole preface behind mag seal. For freshwater reels, you're not dunking your reel. But air and debris and dust and humidity and moisture, all that stuff gets inside, contaminates and emulsifies with the grease. And over time, your grease breaks down. Lubrication, lubrication breaks down, gets you know stiffer, doesn't it gets cakey. But when you keep the elements out, things stay newer a lot longer. So you're not necessarily buying a mag sealed reel so you can go swim with it. I would never recommend that. I've done it with my Saltiga tons of times. Dropped it in the water, you know, unhooking a fish and just putting the rod down, not even caring about it, yada yada yada. It the Saltiga was a fully sealed reel, albeit with mag seal. All, all entry points are sealed except for the main shaft with mag seal. With the ballistic, with the saltist, a saltist back bay, the, the sealing isn't at the level of some of the other reels out there, but they're not designed to be, and that's okay because they make up for it with a very free spinning nature. This reel is a little bit tighter, still silky, buttery, smooth, ultra refined, everything you expect out of a, of a, a good quality Daiwa uh, reel with excellent gearing. They got to do something at the handle entry point. I, I can't see that as being it because they're pushing this thing pretty hard to be a, a, a kick it around type reel. You're having a little bit added restriction to the, the, the friction seal here at the anti-reverse clutch. But you're, you're not really gaining any benefit here. And in terms of the monocoque versus a custom perimeter body seal, it's a wash. I mean, when this side plate gets compressed with those four screws, I heard Mark Mills say in the video talking about the monocoque design, how screws, they have 
tight spots and loose spots. Mike, you, you are a really nice guy. You are a pleasure to be around at the Bassmaster Classic when I met you to, uh, last year. But come on, man. <laughs> when, I, when I torque down these four screws on this side plate, it could be three screws. I, I ain't strong enough to, to winch on a hypoid gear, a, any type of gear design, a spiral bevel that's going to always be pressing away from the pinion for it to make a lick of difference, whether it's a threaded side plate versus a three screw and a pilot pin side plate. And in terms of sealing, it's, it's the perimeter gasket, as long as it's lie, lay, laying in that channel, it's going to compress and it's going to keep water out just fine. Just fine. Look at the pen size. Uh, what the heck was it? The Torque 1. It could be fish like a van stall. It really could. You look at uh, how, how many other examples? Saragossa, Sphero, same thing. That water, that the, the, the gear case was fully sealed and waterproof. And it didn't have a monocoque design. Now, the one thing I can say. You see, th this is also what Mark said. I, I'm, again, I, Mark, I, I wasn't saying, I wasn't complimenting him for being a, a pleasure at, at the Classic because I was trying to knock him and just slight that in there. He did also mention that monocoque saves space. Now, when you machine out or when you manufacture a product out of a specific material, in the case of the spin fisher, it's aluminum, you have to allow in the design a specific amount uh, or, or a minimum of material outside of the, the 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 fastener location. When you're dealing with a a side a side plate that's threaded, you don't have to worry about that in every location that there's going to be a fastener. So you're able to dramatically cut down on the physical size of the gearbox or keep the gearbox in the weight to the industry standard, I guess, and just shove a, a small block 350 in a, in a Prius. <laughs> That's a bad example because electric motors are so much more powerful. But you get the idea. You get the idea. You could put a, a, a bit more powerful thing in, a, in, a, in the same size footprint, which look at the Van Stahl's gear. It's the biggest freaking main gear in the, in the business. It really is. It's one of the largest for the size. So, where do we stand? Um, black, gold, $99 still, cream of the crop. Saltist, black and blue, it, it's still a good reel. The outgoing Saragossa, still to me, checks more boxes than the black and blue Saltist. The, the murdered out Doogie Hauser edition Daiwa Saltist Back Bay, uh, three and four thousand. One of the most refined, one of the most sturdy reels on the market for the price and the two hundred dollar price point. Um, packs the beautiful machined aluminum main gear that the higher end Iowa reels have, the ballistic in the BG frame. It's basically a black and blue Saltist. Minus the higher end of Manibia bearings, which I noticed that this didn't. I didn't touch on that. The ball bearings used in here look to be the same. Oh, don't quote me on that. They're not the bronze shielded NMBs that were in the black and blue saltist. They're the same bearings that were found in the black and gold. Um, so they're not the ultra corrosion resistant variety. They're just a very good quality, high precision stainless. So they're spectacular bearings. They're just not the ultra corrosion resistant variant, which are a little bit more expensive, which was one of the other things that not many people talked about when they were criticizing the black and blue saltist as just being a mag sealed BG. When in fact they shoved the best ball bearings in every location in that reel, which also upped the price along with the bale wire and a little bit better drag. So, you have the Saltist back bay with the beautiful main gear, the BG with the, you know, the great value, the black and blue Saltist, which was kind of a eh, reel out of the bunch, in my, in, in my opinion, comparing it to the Spin Fisher and Saragossa and Spheros and Slammer. 
I I don't know how to, where to put this reel. I, I really don't. It's more refined than a spin fisher, but it's in the ballpark. Like the spin fisher is not your normal pen reel. It's a spectacularly refined reel. It's after you wear it in and run it in, just like this reel when it's once it's used and put a load on for a while and it runs in, it'll it'll loosen up a little bit in a good way. It'll wear in and run in in a good way, and it'll become more refined over time. So it'll, st you know, this is run in. This one's not. This one's a little bit more. I give the edge to this in the refinement category and the the warm and fuzzy factor when you turn the handle over the spin fisher, but. It's not something that I'm going to say, I'm going to buy this over this because it's that much better. No, it's not. That's not the case. It really isn't. Oh, man. If, 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 if this is on a boat and I'm using it for fluke, if I'm using it for, you know, bottom fishing, it's a wash. If I am fishing for a striped bass from a boat, yeah, I might actually go with the BG, MQ. It, the, the sizing isn't there for the spin fisher. The 6,000 at 15 ounces, they go from, what is this, 12 ounces all the way up to like 20. Like they skip this, which I really wish they didn't. I really wish they had a, 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 a 15 to 16 ounce sized reel or 17 ounce sized reel, but they just skip over it every freaking time. So for that aspect, I'm going to go with this because it's going to give me the line capacity they want to, to go between 40 and 30 pound braid and still have enough line on, on the, to, to facilitate a long cast. So I'm, I'm going with the, the Daiwa over the spin fisher for striped bass boat fishing. But Saragossa, hello. <laughs> it's one thing to compare the spin fisher and slammer to this reel. It's an entirely different thing when you start bringing in the most proven best selling reel in the segment, that Saragossa. And the fact that they got a new one coming out in weeks that I know for a fact they've taken out some of the things that people were complaining about and really drilled down on making it a even more refined user experience. How generic did that just sound? Did I just say refined user experience? <sighs> yeah. So depending on the size, you're really tit for tat in the price range. So unless the Saragossa and Shimano decided to say, you know what? We had the best ceiling on the market in the price range. We're just gonna pull all that out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm terrified. They might actually do that. <laughs> so, so I can't say the new Saragossa is going to be better than this until I see what they did. I've been told everything's an improvement, but I've, I've been surprised at all. I was told everything's an improvement about the new Stella with the last generation, and I don't agree with that. Still great reel, still bulletproof and tanky, but. That's yeah, another story. Stella SW08 for life. <sighs> so I went into this uber excited to get my, my grubby, greasy mitts on a, a, a reel from one of the biggest manufacturers out there, well ahead of its release date. Um, the person who gave this reel to me just asked I'd be fair. He's, he, he told the people that or I guess signing off on this, that uh, if I see something, I'll say something, but I will be fair. And I, I guess the fairest thing for me to say after all of this is I've, I've not fished this reel and everything it brings put together, yada, 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 you know, isolating each individual thing. I, I do something better here. Do something better there. That's basic. It's better than the BG in terms of the ceiling there. <laughs> Not by much. The only the, the other benefit you'll get is if you have effective ceiling at every entry point, you're gonna have a weakness here. 
Now, when you have a weakness and you have a piston moving up and down, it, it just it's not going to exist in a complete vacuum here. It's going to find that weakness. It's going to push and pull. It's going to move air in and out. Air is a liquid. When you when you when you have a uh, a balloon full of water, you squeeze the bottom. It it moves towards the top. It moves where there's the least resistance. If this is the least resistance, that's a that's a bad spot. <laughs> so. I would like to see something better there. And you know what? Since I'm talking about it now, don't just talk about it, be about it. This is the 8000. And again, this reel is going to be a excellent, excellent boat reel. If you like the BG, you're going to like this reel even better. It's going to handle it's going to handle some of the harsher environments better than the BG ever did. I'm not sure how much more it's going to hold up compared to the now for the big reveal. This is how they do it on the 8000. Okay. That's cool. So, this is similar to the Saltig or that they have that hex metal underneath the rotor retaining nut that gets keyed to the, the rotor. See that silver underneath? That's how they do it on the, uh, the bigger Saltigas. Or all the Saltigas, or they used to anyway. Uh, where is, there it is. So you have this and this. And you have this, which is seated underneath here, and then the, the larger O-ring. Accomplishes the same thing. Although it's more tightly constricted around the perimeters. And it keeps things so... Ah... So if this is sealed and there's a piston coming through it, there may be a little bit of slop in where this just folds over the, uh, the lip on the, uh, the rotor retaining nut. But yeah, it's, it's a wash. It's, it's, it's not, that's not my biggest concern. It's that side plate handle entry point, which I feel as though they could do a, a much better job. Because Daiwa does some incredible things. They really make some of the best bait casters on the market. They make the Saltiga. They make excellent long cast reels. Everything Dio makes, they they were they, they have the potential to make the best in class for every product that they decide to uh, to to put out. The next uh, spinning reel from Dio we're going to be tearing down outside the BGMQ eight thousand is this thing. I'm not a big silver and red fan, but the silver and red combination on this bright Porsche seal silver is just beautiful. So this is the Procyon AL. It's essentially a metal tattoola minus a CRBB. And instead of it being a CRBB, I think it's a standard stainless steel bone bearing. This is the saltest back bay no mag seal in small up to 4,000 size. So it's got the machined aluminum main gear, compact body, no mag seal, no seals to add resistance, but it's got aluminum side plate, aluminum frame. This is what I've been waiting for. And it comes in at $20 less than the Stratic. No seals at all, which is okay for me in freshwater. But boy, this is a, this is a rock solid reel, rock solid reel. I'm gonna have fun tearing this one down shortly. So guys, if you've made it this far, uh, thank you. I thank each and every one of you guys for, for showing up and checking us out. Uh, let me know down below if you guys have any questions. 
Uh, it goes without saying that without you guys, I wouldn't have a platform to exist. This teardown wouldn't exist. I'm willing to bet Dio is... <laughs> <laughs> Dio now wishes they haven't given me these reels. Hey, there's nothing I can do. I can only call it like I see it. If I, if, if, I, if I said anything different than I said today, you guys would be all over me. And you guys asked all the questions. You wanted me to focus on the comparison and ceiling more than anything else. You wanted to know whether or not it was better than the black and gold BG, which it is. Clearly, it brings everything the BG brings and more. So there's that. The other question that I saw pop up, is it worth it? I can't answer that question because there are so many people that will never buy more than a $99 reel. They just don't think there's a need for it. Whether they're 70 years old, 60 years old, or 20 years old, or 15 years old. There are people out there that just don't feel that anything more than $100 is a worthy investment for throwing things that things with gills and the wet stuff. So for that person, it's not worth it. If you like nice things, it's not that much nicer than the black and gold BG in terms of warm and fuzzies that you get per handle crank. The, the, the black and gold BG is that good of a reel. So to really improve upon that in terms of the fit, finish and overall feel, and the end user experience, you got to really push and punch up a few levels to the point where you're at the ballistic, where you get the drastic weight reduction and the, the ultra refined uh, gearing found in the, the, the their machine aluminum gearing. The Certate, which is, as far as I can tell, fishing side by side, a couple different exists. The Certate's even smoother than that of the exist. It's on the level of the Shimano Stella FJ. And is nicer than the Stella Fi that I have a pair of. So to get to above this level, you're at top tier refinement. And you're almost at that level with the BG. So, you know, is it worth it over that? I don't think the extra $150 is worth it if you're looking for specifically for refinement. Because... You're going to get the added seal at the rotor on the output side of the gear train, which is going to add a little bit of resistance, which you don't have at the black and gold $99, $110 BG. Is it worth it for its weather resistance and uh, elemental resistance? I mean, it's more resistant to casual exposure to the elements when you're on a boat and the guy is hosing down all the girls in the bikinis that are twerking on the bow while you're on the back, you know, in the background striper fishing and you get hit with the hose by accident, it's better in that regard. But I don't think you're going to get that drastic of a lifespan extension or a like new performance extension if you're fishing it hard on the sand. If you're wading the back bays and sod banks 100 yards, 200 yards off the bank, which is what we do all spring. We're 100 to 200 yards off, waist to chest deep on the mud flats, climbing up and down sod banks, tripping and falling over ourselves in the dark, unhooking our fish by putting our rod in the water. Nine times out of ten, it's about a foot submerged. This is not that real. This is not that real. You're looking at Van Stahl, Z-Bass, Pentork 1. The in-between, though, jetty hopping, you know, you know, summertime wading in the sand down in Florida, wading in the sand in the New Jersey beaches during the summertime, bucktailing off the, you know, Maine and, and Montauk and south side Long Island beaches. Um, perfect for that. But I'm not seeing this as something that's going to be taken waves repeatedly and dunked repeatedly. Um if this can't handle it with that much frequency, if the slammer can't do it, um, it's, it's, it's tough to say that this is going to be as capable uh, in that regard. In terms of big game performance, I'll have to take apart the bigger reel to see if there's anything different. Uh, I, I don't see it being incapable of, of you know, fishing heavy drag settings. 
If you saw the size of the main shaft in this one, you're not going to have to worry about any shaft spending. Uh, the rotor is perfectly adequate, just like it was in the Saltus and the regular BG. Um, you got the guys with the biggest and loudest voices on the internet to talk about the rotor flex and all that kind of stuff. I mean, a little bit of flex is okay. Um, I fished a Saltiga for years under heavy drag settings, and I didn't have any issues. I mean, I'm not fishing it at 40 pounds or 30 pounds, but I'm fishing it at 20. Never had an issue. Never had an issue. So that's 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 where I draw my experiences from. 20 pounds of drag is as high as I go on a spinning reel. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I don't see it as anything but purpose built for that with the uh, the additional protection to keep it you know running like new on a boat longer than say the the black and gold bg but time will tell that's really what it comes down to um if i had my way in a perfect world i would have them do something at this location change that up i see that as a weak point I thought I was going to see this area as a weak point with this this uh, opening at the uh, the boot entrance, and it wasn't. This is this is actually a brilliantly designed area. You can get in here, you know, add some lubricant as needed, Q-tip some lubricant out as needed. If you run into any issues, you can get a good idea, crack that open, find out if you had some water intrusion, find out if that grease looks like it's oxidized or contaminated. And go ahead and really, you know, get ahead on a potential problem. But <laughs> if you do see a potential problem, this is your other problem. You need this thing to get in it. So, yeah. I'm working on a project uh, to get these out in mass and be affordable. To cover all the sizes with one tool. I, I, I think with... Daiwa and the amount of monocoque design reels that they're coming out with a tool one tool to control them all is something that's going to be uh, a requirement especially for the saltwater guys there there are a lot of people like working on their stuff um, initially I played it off like you know there were the community that works on their gear is like one percent of the hardcore which is two percent so one percent of the two percent of the population that fishes no, a lot of you guys work on your, your own gear. A lot of you guys. I never thought that I would get so many questions about maintenance of reels. It's, it's over, you know, you get 18 million views on just YouTube alone and a million views elsewhere. And over the course of a decade, posting over 20,000 times on one of the world's biggest, you know, websites, the amount of communications you get from people is staggering. And I initially thought that the tinkerer population and the, and the DIY guys uh, were were not nearly as prevalent, but I was wrong. You guys, there's a lot of guys out there that like, like working on their own stuff. Not just from the United States either. Australia, South Africa, Europe, Japan. Language barriers are real when it comes to you know going over step by steps, but you know that is what it is. So <laughs> it's with all that being said. I really hope you guys like this. Again, it, what my, my goal here wasn't to bury the reel before it was born. I had no idea what I was getting into other than already having seen what was here. And, uh, yeah. Stay tuned for the 8000. Stay tuned for the Procyon AL. Stay tuned for the comparison between uh, the, the new and old Lexus. And stay tuned for the Pen Battle 3 versus Pen Battle 2 and Fierce 3 and Spin Fisher four-way comparison. This is a nice reel. I'm not a pen fan either. This is this is this is this is a nice reel. This is going to give the black and gold BG a run for the money. Stay tuned for when I tear this puppy apart. I'm I'm not often impressed by pen, which kind of makes it more easily for pen to impress me when they come out with something good. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to put it. But yeah, stay tuned for what we compare this guy to his cousins and for those concerned both of these reels are 100 percent vegan no sheep have been shorn in order to make up the drag stacks as they incorporate 100 percent free range carbon fiber heavily greased from the factory 
Now, yeah, I get it. They're two totally different sized reels. The die was a 5,000 size. It weighs about 23 ounces, and this thing comes in at around 14 ounces. I get it. Uh, <laughs> and if you've seen some of the reviews I've put out uh, featuring some of the oversized cast ink main gears from Daiwa, I've been very complimentary towards them. However, when it comes to an egg beater in 2018 in the $200 price range, cast zinc is not acceptable. It really isn't. Uh, there's just nothing I can say positive about there being even an oversized <laughs> behemoth cast zinc gear. At the $200 price range, I want that premium material. And if you look, this is out of that 8,000 size Shimano Saragossa. This is a forged aluminum encoded main gear. And yeah, I get it, the Daiwa Saltus teeth are bigger, the gear is bigger, it's bigger, heavier, thicker, all the above, but it's a much cheaper material. At the same time, it's cast versus machined or forged. I'm going machined and forged all day, every day in the $200 price range. So we gotta give bonus points to the Slammer. Not only does it have the additional support, the oscillation cam gear is made out of brass. Now again, in the past I said it could be made out of bubble gum, it's not a big deal but it's a more premium material and they're priced the same versus your standard cast sink down here. So already again, on paper, I am digging everything I'm seeing about this new Slammer 3. Now before we move along, it's worth pointing out that the oscillation drive gear in the Saltist runs on a ball bearing, where on the Slammer 3 it runs on a bushing. Now when it comes to freshwater finesse style reels, you want that ball bearing because you can feel every little bit of extra added weight or resistance. But when it comes to the bigger reels and the more rugged designs with all the seals and all that kind of stuff, you don't really feel it. So you're not really going to be losing out one versus the other. And when it comes to the ball bearing support here, it's so over greased that it might as well be a bushing at that point. Now, earlier on in the googly bits, I kind of goofed on the Pen Slammer 3's ridiculous drag capabilities, and I was very polite to the Saltist, but again, I was going by what you find on Google. Now, this is what makes up the true difference. This is why the Slammer 3 can put out so much more stopping power than what you find in the Saltist, and it's pretty obvious. The Saltist uses your run-of-the-mill top-down drag stack that ultimately ends up running on a spool shim. If you look here, and you look at the bottom of the spool here, the spool is always going to be running and spinning on this little urethane bushing or plastic shim, whatever you want to call it. It's a spool spacer. Now, when it comes to the design of the Pen Slammer 3, if you ever heard of the term dual drag, where you have a drag surface area on the top of the spool and a drag surface area on the bottom of the spool, this is essentially that. From the top down, you have a screw down plate that has uh, a rubber material to keep it sealed. And again, both of these drags are sealed with lip seals and drag knobs. You have your two top washers, your metal washer and your carbon washer, that are sandwiched between the top of the spool. Big deal, everybody else does that. Now what's interesting is when you get to the bottom portion of the drag, you have these eared metal washers that have the carbon drag material bonded to them. They're actually one piece, they probably use a high temp adhesive. Abbott does that in their lever drags. And on the other eared washer, if it'll focus, same thing. Both sides though. So you have isolated areas of the drag that kind of increase the amount of pressure between the plates. And on top of that, instead of it running on the spool shim, which are supposed to just be used to uh, <laughs> level the line on the spool, make sure it winds on evenly, it doesn't. This plate here is fixed. This will not turn. This is the bottom plate on the bottom of the spool, just like so, if you can imagine that going in just like that. And everything else rides on top of it. So it's almost like the lever drag, drag plate and spool on your big conventional reels. It's a, it's a very nice design. The only downfall that I can find, if you're a bait fisherman and you need really loose drags, if you're live lining bunker, or if you're just setting out multiple rods and sand spikes and you wanna keep your drag loose, the loosest drag setting on the pen is a little tight. Some guys may not like that. If that's what you want in a reel, eh, don't buy a slammer. But if you're a plugger, if you're a chunker that holds the rod and you always want that tight drag or a fighting drag or the drag you're going to be fighting a fish at, it's perfectly fine. And it's buttery smooth. Not knocking the Daiwa. The Daiwa drag is smooth. It's a powerful drag. 23 ounce reel has about 22 pounds of drag. But the drag stack found in the Slammer 3 is probably one of the best you'll ever find in the $200 price range, at least that I've come across anyway. Unfortunately, water did 
and it did get past the seal on that sealed ball bearing. Fast forward two days after the last outing with this reel, I started to notice that there was some corrosion or some pitting inside the races of the ball bearing and it got very noisy and very raspy. And it is indeed this ball bearing. Now, had that hydrophobic coating remained intact, would it have prevented this from happening? I, I honestly don't know. However, I would have preferred that the design not rely on one of the most sensitive ball bearings in the entire reel to be the last line of defense protecting one of the most sensitive areas in the entire reel, which is the anti-reverse clutch mechanism. So I, I guess you can kind of say I'm a little disappointed, but it's one of those things where I, I, I just don't know if it was a problem caused by me due to the fact that the hydrophobic coating kind of gunked up and I ended up removing it. So yeah, we'll move along from there. It's something to watch out for. And again, I'm on Penn's side on this one. I, I feel as though that what I did, even though Penn said that it shouldn't cause an issue removing or having that coating there or not shouldn't cause an issue, um, I'm gonna give Penn the benefit on the, of the doubt. But at the same time, when you compare it to how the Saragossa seals off their anti-reverse clutch mechanism below the rotor, it actually is a better design. There's, there's no way around it. If you look at the ceiling down in here, we don't have to take everything apart here. I could just show you very simply. This is a, this is a rotor cup. So if you look like so on the back side of the reel, this little metal cup goes into there. So that way the seal has something very uniform to ride on. And there is actually an additional O-ring. So that way when this is all compressed together, it's all kind of sealed and watertight. And when you look here, this has been thoroughly cleaned out of the box from the factory. It is greased to kingdom come. This entire seal on the top side is loaded with a ton of grease. And if you look inside this rubber seal here, you can see there's a big gap in there. Inside that gap, once again, is flooded with grease. On top of that, it is a very tight fitting seal here. So you have those two lips, the void that's packed with grease, all offering a ton of sealing. That is fairly high in resistance trying to turn this little seal against this rotor retaining cup. And again, when everything is in place, this gets sealed down like a hatch. And then you have an O-ring at the base that goes against here so it's sealed when it's everything's screwed down and bolted in that cap is sealed from the bottom with the o-ring and it's sealed at top here and the four screws all have o-ring seals at the top so no water can get by it's a brilliant design and it really is as waterproof as the twin power the stella at the anti-reverse clutch mechanism it is one of the best sealed reels on the planet you can even probably compare it to that of a Z-Bass or a Van Stahl in this area. The side plate seals, meaning where the handle traverses or the, ax the axle of the main gear traverses the ball bearings in the side plate, aren't as stiff and as tight of a seal as you'll find in those reels, but where you find the perimeter seal, where you find the anti-reverse clutch seal, I'll put that against a Z-Bass and a Van Stahl all day, every day. I know tons of guys that dunk these reels regularly. The only issues they have are with the line roller bearings, which is to be expected with this kind of reel. There is a lot these reels share with one another. Their designs are fairly similar, and that can also be found in how they seal. What I mentioned earlier about the axle of the main gear where they traverse the side plate bearings. And if you see, you have that three screw design holding the bearing in place that compresses these gaskets here against the frame, it's on the arc side, it's gotta go like that, and then the washer goes like this, and then you go like with the ball bearing like that, and it sandwiches the washer into that side plate. So that way water is not getting it once it forms around that axle of the main gear like so. Both of these are fairly tight fitting. They're single lip seals. I think on the Van Stalls you have a quad seal, same thing with the Z-Bass, which are again, much, much, much tighter, which is why when you're retrieving those reels are a lot stiffer because all of the seals, when you add up each individual seal, since they're so tight, that's why they're a little bit sluggish, which is kind of impressive how the Shimano and the Slammer, when these seals are properly lubricated, are very easy and free spinning reels. 
The Saragossa, I gotta give them brownie points. They have such an effective way of sealing off that anti-reverse clutch mechanism, yet, even though that sealing is so restrictive or constrictive and effective, on the output side of the gear train, it still is very easy to retrieve. Very, very well designed, very well, well thought out reel. I can't wait to see what they do with it in 2019. It's been around for a while it's due for a refresh i love the fa i really enjoy the saragossa sw i've had the 10,000s myself and i yes i am aware early on they had issues with unbalanced rotors and i believe they have since resolved that i haven't heard that being brought up and i haven't seen that uh evident in any any of the reels i've handled as of late this one doesn't have it it was mainly found in the 5000s and 6000s now starting off we're going to take a look at the gear set because they're staring us right in the face we have the pretty large main gear of the Shimano Saragossa versus the pretty small main gear in the Penslammer 3. And keep in mind, roughly 8 ounces separates these two reels. The Penslammer is a much smaller reel, hence the smaller main gear. But at the same time, Pen isn't one that's really known to put an oversized main gear in a spinning reel, which we saw on the $99 reel comparison where I took the 2500 size, 8 ounce Daiwa Fuego, and it had a much larger gear uh, than the, the 4500 Battle II. And the 4500 Battle II uses the same size gear as this. Actually, this might actually be smaller, believe it or not. But, but, it's not cast zinc. It's not forged aluminum. It's brass. And we here at Tackle Advisors, we like brass any way we can get it. And I, I got to give them credit. We haven't seen a brass main gear or a bronze main gear uh, in quite some time in a spinning reel. I can't remember the last time I found a brass spinning, uh, brass main gear of this design, not like a Pen 706 or 704Z uh, in a spinning reel of this price range. This is probably the best main gear out of any spinning reel right now at its price range. So, how does everything else compare? You have your forged aluminum that's been coated. Uh, whether or not this is an alumite coating or an anodized coating, I don't know, but Shimano likes to coat their gears. And from what I have experienced now over the last couple, you know, last two decades, whenever I think the first coated main gear I fished was a Shimano first generation Thunnus. They, they didn't even call it plating gearing yet. And what I found, and it, it, it rings true for pretty much every Shimano reel, when you get one brand new out of the box, they are buttery smooth or liquid smooth. Without a doubt, they're probably the smoothest spinning reel on the planet as far as a brand's concerned. However, once this finish wears, out goes the window smoothness. And what I've found with other companies, out of the box, including this specific reel, out of the box, they don't feel like a Shimano. And this specific model reel in time, a couple outings, couple, maybe two, 10 or 20 hours of fishing, the whole reel starts to loosen up a little bit, the gears kind of run in, and they feel smoother, if that's what you want. So with that being said, take a look at the wear pattern on this main gear. I'm going to bring up another close-up from a previous video that I put out where the reel hadn't been fished all that much. And you'll see a direct comparison in how well worn that tooth is. If you look at the gear tooth, you can see that it doesn't extend the full length of the tooth. And you can see it almost has polished it. Whereas before it just looked like it was a little marred. It actually ran in very well. And this reel became like, when I say smooth, I would take it over Saragossa, and that's kind of saying something. And then the you know a day or two later, you started hearing the. Let me get this off. Maybe you can hear it a little bit better. Then you started hearing the raspiness. And it's not going to show up with the mics. I have my mic turned very very low, so you don't hear any background noise. So I, I got to give the main gear quality to pen on this one even though i do like the main gear of the saragos and it's and again it's not a difference of much in my opinion even though it's superior metal there's something about shimano gears that do do very well and for 90 percent of the guys out there 
you're gonna want that ultra smooth feeling reel and everything else that goes along with Shimano reels versus pen. And moving along from there, we'll talk about the anti-reverse clutches. Uh, Shimano's been using something called Super Stopper for a very, very long time. And it is one of the most effective ways of preventing the rotor from going backwards. The only downfall that I can find with it is they are quite possibly the most sensitive to any kind of oil or grease contamination. So if you spray oil, WD-40, it could be anything, and it gets in there, it will fail in the cold. If you get grease on it, especially if they get to the top and the bottom of those individual cylinders that are in there, it will fail pretty much in any type of temperature. Now I say hot versus cold because you know, grease and oils tend to thicken a little bit when it gets colder, and that extra bit of resistance is all it takes to foul up that system. Other than that, it is, without a doubt, one of the strongest mechanisms on the market, and it's very similar up to the twin power. And when you compare it to what you find in the Slammer 3, it's an off-the-shelf part. It's very strong. It locks up very solidly. And it can, you can put a little bit of grease on it. You really can. In the cold, it'll fail if you grease it. In the warm weather, it won't fail. It will just basically add more protection to it. But at the same time, when it comes down to maximum loads, yeah, I don't know what it is about this thing here, but it just seems to always function. I never have an issue with them. And they're easy to fully maintain. I can just pop these two screws. Eh, screw it, literally. Pop these two screws real quick. You just gotta kind of rotate that lid off a little bit and you can take out each one of those individual cylinders, clean them top and bottom. You can put a light coating of oil and then wipe them down just so they have that, that surface layer of film. And then all you gotta do is find the holes that don't go through and then put the screws back in like so. Now, moving right along, I want to briefly touch on some of the materials used in the construction of these reels. And I'm going to start off at one of the most overlooked spots on any fishing reel. And I'm willing to bet that this won't make a difference to 99% of you guys out there. But I distinctly remember, it's got to be back now, 10 years, something like that. The original Saragossa FA, sized 18 and 20,000. 100 miles off the coast of New Jersey, out in the Hudson Canyons, I distinctly remember the sound of what sounded like a gunshot. And it was a break-off boat side on a big tuna. And it was a result of the original Saragossa's drag knob mushrooming due to the heat and pressure, binding to the spool, and locking up when that fish surged, and it blew off that 80-pound or 120-pound liter at boat side. And I distinctly remember a post on 360 Tuna later on that week. I might have even been Captain Mike on the Renegade. I, I, I'm going back 10 years. My memory might be a little foggy of who it was. But I remember the issue. I also remember Shimano addressing it. And I remember it coming up again with the updated or upgraded drag knobs. Now, fast forward to this year. And I'm not sure if it's ever been put out publicly. But... I received a picture from somebody who owns a 4,000 size Saltiga fishing down in Florida, and it's made out of what appears to be the same material of the Slammer 3, and the same exact thing happened. It heated up, it mushroomed, and again, keep in mind, the base here, this is what compresses your drag stack. All that heat and pressure is pressing down, all that friction is building up heat, and this can swell. I don't know if it's going to happen on the Slammer 3. However, it's worth mentioning that if you are fishing down in Florida and you hook a jack and a shark runs you off, you could run into an issue, especially when you're dealing with reels putting out as much pressure as these reels are capable of. And I, I, you know, I figured if I have experience with it, if I've witnessed it, if I've seen it, I want you guys to be aware of it, whether or not it's going to affect you. Up in the northeast where I'm at, I'm willing to bet the only time you can ever run into an issue like that is with a tuna. But down south... You get some true speedsters that you can run into accidentally. 
so it's it's worth bringing up. We have the line rollers. You have ball bearing line rollers in the Saragossa. The old slammers used bushings. They did release a new bale uh, armature. And you can see if you look side by side, this is the old one, this is the new one. They do have a little bit of a change in the design. If you look at where the bale wire goes into here, it's all one piece. But this looks to be a little bit larger in this area. And the line roller itself has changed. It's no longer, no longer rounded, but it's a flat angled portion of the line roller and it incorporates a ball bearing. So just pointing that out design. And one last thing before we go ahead and wrap things up, I want to take a second and compare how the Gosa and the Slammer do their drags. And if you look here on the left, you have the Saragossa's drag stack. And on the right, you have the Slammer. And starting from the top down, you can see that the Shimano uses smaller friction surfaces, but more of them on the top half of the drag. And on the bottom, the Saragossa, yeah, it's a bigger reel, uses a single large carbon fiber disc that runs off of the base drag plate and the base of the spool. Whereas with the pen, it's a little more involved. It's kind of the opposite, where the Shimano used more friction surfaces at the top and pen uses more at the bottom, but they're a little unique. If you look here, you can see that they are, not only are they more keyed and more rings, so there's more isolation between each one of the drag surfaces, they're actually adhered to the washers. Now, a lot of uh, lever drag reels use this uh, method of increasing drag pressure, where you literally glue the drag washer to the keyed ring, and that forces it to stay isolated, so each one of these functions independently, adding to the friction. So when you compare the two, if you see the specs where the Saragossa goes up to 44 pounds on their largest reel, where you can get over 60 with the slammer. That's kind of why. And lastly, and in my opinion, one of the coolest things about these dual drag designs, it really kind of does go to the, that buttery smoothness and low startup and non herky jerkiness is the fact that at no time is your drag running on spool shims that are made out of your standard Rulon, Delrin, Nylon, or Teflon. And if you look here, this is a Battle II, and you can find this design on hundreds and hundreds of reels out there over the last hundred years, where basically the base of the spool runs on that spool shim. So when you tighten down the drag, you have your nice fancy drag stack with your carbon fiber washers, blah, 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 and it gets compressed and it compresses that drag stack, but it ultimately ends up running on this here. So even if you have a buttery smooth carbon fiber drag stack greased with cowls or whatever, you know, drag grease, it still runs on this. This design keys the drag plate, the base drag plate, to the spool shaft. So the spool turns on this, and the spool turns on this. So again, at no time is this applying friction. No time is the spool spinning on that surface. Great design. Both drags are spectacular. Both of them are very smooth. Got to give max drag brownie points to the pen. Hands down, one of the best drags ever in this price range. I don't remember seeing anything even close, to be honest.